So an interesting thing that comes up all the time is the ability to align viewport titles with the viewport in Revit. Uh, we haven't been given this ability in the API until Revit 2022. There are rhythm nodes that do this now. Uh, I'll link to those below in the description. Uh, there's a video on it. Uh, but that doesn't leave us any kind of wiggle room for if we want to align view titles in older versions of Revit. So a concept that I've talked about on the blog before is the ability to do things that Revit doesn't necessarily want you to do. One of them being the model group uh, hack. So in the case of controlling a model group's origin, that's something that's still not available in the API. And there's a workaround with it if you just delete an object out of the group after you've defined the origin. So there's a node for that as well. And I'll, I'll link to the video and the blog post on that too. Uh, viewport titles are the same way. We don't really have APIs for them in older versions of Revit, so it's a little frustrating. But if we kind of think out the process, we can work around it. So this is a viewport with a poorly aligned view title right now. Generally, you would come in and align this the best you can and see what you can do. One thing that's interesting, though, is if we expand this floor plan sheet, we see the floor plan view on here. If we go ahead and do something like this, drag the view back on the sheet, we will notice that the viewport title encompasses the bounding box of the view. So this is interesting because it kind of matches that bottom corner to the other bottom corner uh, of the view. So that's really interesting, that interaction. It's really cool that we can do that in the UI. Uh, but if we have a lot of viewports, that's not really a great way to handle it. Uh, so what we could do is we'll mess this thing up again. We'll adjust even the size. And we can look at how to do this in Dynamo. So sequencing those same steps is very doable in Dynamo. Uh, so if we go to select the viewport, we'll do select model element, and then we'll do align view title. This node's not currently published in Rhythm yet. I'm still cleaning it up, but all the source code is open source and available to you. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and connect this viewport into the input. It'll run for a second, and it's redoing those interactions that I was doing manually through the UI. So now we have a viewport title that's aligned. It's the width of the viewport. Uh, we can't control that still easily. I'll say easily in older versions of Revit uh, because it's not available in the API. You could control it, I mean, uh, if you were to change to the crop box of your view and then change it back. So there's a lot of little workarounds that you can do. Uh, one thing we will notice is the node turned yellow, and that's because the original viewport is now gone. I've replaced it with a new version. So that's something else to keep in mind if you want to do this interaction is you might need to store your viewport number or anything like that just in case you needed that somewhere. So keep that in mind. That's part of the reason this interaction is not something I've relied on a lot, and we've always wanted a real API for it because the ability recreating a viewport's a heavy thing and we tend to not want to recreate things if we can help it. That being said, let's go ahead and mess this up again and modify our crop region a little bit. And I'll actually make sure it crops. And let's say I wanted the viewport to be this wide or the viewport title to be to this area. In this case, if I were to redrag this view back on the sheet, the viewport title will encompass that bounding box now. So it's going to the outer limits, which that annotation crop is on. If that's the case and that's where you wanted it, you would then kind of come out and adjust your crop region back after the fact. So you could sequence that with Dynamo 2, which is kind of cool. And now I have a left aligned viewport title that's a certain width. So that's the ways that you can control this in older versions. Uh, it's a way that we've handled some of these kind of interactions in the API with Revit add-ins. But I thought I would kind of share the process for it with everyone as well, because I've seen a few other people using it. And demystifying the process is interesting. All right, thanks.